There's no light in this scene at all, so it's pretty dark. So I want to throw in a skylight, which is basically an HDRI around your scene that can just give you an even lighting to start with. So that the skylight works, you need to give it a specified cube map. So you want to import an HDRI of your choice. After you've imported the file, you can throw it into the cube map slot and you will see that you will start seeing the asset here. One thing that immediately happens and that might be slightly confusing is, as you just saw, the, the light was fading on. And this has to do with the auto exposure settings in Unreal. So as a game engine, it always tends to try to expose the image correctly so that the player sees everything around you. But if you work in a visual context, you want to control it more. So you don't want the camera exposure to change depending on any light that you put into the scene. So in order to access that, we need to throw in a so-called post-processing volume. This post-processing volume, which you'll find under volumes post-process volume, is something you will always need in almost every scene in Unreal Engine, because this is the volume that it will actually give you access to all those options that you want to tweak. So just throw that in and you will see it looks like a cube. And that has mainly to do with that the post process volume as it is set up now is only active within this cube. We want it to be active throughout the scene though. So the first thing we want to do is scroll down and enable infinite extend. This now means it's ignoring the cube and is just active throughout our level. Now in the post process volume, there is under lens an option which is called exposure. And when you turn this on quickly, you will see this is set on auto exposure histogram. That basically means Unreal is looking at the image and then is trying to pull in the black and white levels so that you have like a correctly exposed image. In order to turn that off, we want to activate min and max brightness and put both of those on a value of one. This basically means there is no auto exposure anymore and the exposure is always set to this value. Besides the exposure settings, the post process volume gives you access to a lot of settings that are relevant to the visual appearance of your scene. So for example, you can tweak the intensity of bloom or add camera effects like lens flares. You can also do a full color grading in here, including importing a LUT file, or you also have access to the rendering features, including the ray tracing options that we will talk about later in this tutorial. Let's rotate our boulder into a slightly more visually pleasing angle and then add some lights so that we can see what direction we're heading with this. You don't have to be super accurate on this right now because later we're gonna add a camera which will also change the whole focal length and all these kind of things again. Then the light we want to add is a rectangular light. A rectangular light is a really nice light source if you want to create wide areas of light and have very soft shadowing. And in the area light, you have several different settings like the intensity, source width and height, which is specifically interesting for us right now. So I just want to create a rather large area light that I then want to move out a little bit and, and from the top down to kind of throw a light onto the top surface of this rock. Now around the area light, you will see these blue lines that are a sort of a circle. And now you will also realize there's no light hitting our rock at the moment. This is controlled by the attenuation radius. So beyond those blue lines, no object will be affected by this light. So we want to increase this attenuation radius a little bit and then also increase the intensity to quite a bit higher than that. I'm going with 400 for now, but we might tweak this later again. After we've added the rectangular light, you might have recognized this message popped up in our viewport. Lighting needs to be rebuilt. This message is really only important when you intend to bake your lighting into light maps. It's a traditional way of lighting in game engines where the light information of the light will be baked inside the texture map so that the light doesn't need to be calculated anymore at runtime. In our case, we want to keep our scene completely dynamic. We will be working with ray tracing and we're also not really concerned about frames per second as we're just creating a still image. So go ahead inside your rectangular light and change its mobility setting to movable. Static and stationary are both settings that imply that the light information will be baked into the light map. These are just different ways of flexibility, but when the light is on movable, it's totally dynamic and will not be considered during baking. 